bad service. Hello everybody. Good evening on this beautiful Tuesday evening in Hawaii. A lot of stars out there right now and the moon is out shining. Uh, we are gonna do our evening update. Um, myself, Philip, um, John, and also Mileka. So, um, you know, tune in and we're gonna be doing some updates on what's what's happening in on, uh, our neck of the woods. So, on my end, lava is still entering the ocean entry um, in Kapoho. It's still crawling towards the south. And it, this morning, a new entry point had opened up on the northern part of the, the flow field. And um, in the entry point, it's approximately 1.6 miles wide um, this morning. So there's, uh, there's some lava spewing out on the sand beach that is north of, north of the, um, the entry point and also on the south. So it's still spreading out to the south. Uh, the flows that was headed to the south kind of slowed just a tad but it's still doing the same thing moving south um, fisher 8 is still the dominant fisher uh, fisher 22 is kind of up and down some days it'll spatter some days it'll glow today it was glowing not too not too much of a, of any activity there but fisher fisher 8 is still pumping lava the volume is pretty much the same and lava is still <coughs> still entering sorry we're dark here <laughs> we got some uh, issues with the with the lighting here um, there you go but um, it's still still um, very much active Fisher 8 is still very much active another thing that came up today um, tomorrow Wednesday um, Wednesday night market down in Kalapana if people are going to uh, Wednesday night market um, you guys uh, well they're gonna be checking everybody so the only way you can get through the checkpoint at highway 130 I just got it inf uh, informed by um, some friends in the police department they are they will be cracking down tomorrow they will not let anybody through without a placard so they will not let anybody through without a placard and um, so again if you guys want to go down to Uncle Roberts tomorrow and enjoy the the night market and you know it's it's an awesome market it's it's good for our community here and a lot of people can go down there and and kind of forget about what's happening and have some fun but they're making it harder for us to to, to make it down there so nobody can go down without a placard um, there's also new developments um, up at the, the crater um, some huge earthquakes happening and uh, and they're, they are trying to figure out a new place to um, do their do the lava viewing area. So um, it's still in the talks right now. But today at the hub, we had some awesome guests. Um, lunch, we had some really good lunch donated by some, uh, some awesome uh, documentary people. They're, they're here on the island doing documentaries. Also, we had um, Sam Choi. Sam Choi came here for, to cook for dinner. That was that was epic, and more to come. More more to more to see people coming coming here and giving back to the, our community in Puna and Pahoa. So with that, that's my update for now. But here's Philip. Hey, how's it, everybody? How's it going? Here, John. Good evening. And we, any new developments, man? It's been mostly the same. That's the short version, right? But we always like to look at the, the map. There's a map from today, 10 a.m. today, showing basically the same thing. The red's in an area of new lava, so it's actually mostly on the sides. That hasn't pushed south as much. It's kind of spreading out against 55 flow and against the ocean kind of over here. Um, but on map, speaking of maps, people may have seen this animation of the maps that the USGS put out today. Let's see if I can get it. Right, May 16th to 25th, they just put them all like in a row, right, with a, in a sequence. So you actually can see how the floor field has developed. Right, May 16th, 28th, 30th, 31st, 4th, 
Okay. Yeah, now watch this edge over here as it expands and it's going to start moving south. And that's what we've been talking about right now, is that this area right there is all that's really changing. Fifteen, we're getting close, look at that jump to eighteen. Fifth, there it goes. So as far right. as it gets. So. Sorry, guys. We don't have a light. <laughs> Trying to see if we can get a light here. Get them on. Right here we go. <laughs> Trying to this, yeah. So yeah, that's the that's the map update. Um, this is what Gekka just said. It's still encroaching to the south towards Cool Kala. Um, I heard it's actually already on Cool Kala property. They got a really big property down there, right? So it's actually already on the edge of their property, and they're. Obviously, very concerned about the flow it's still inching that way towards them. Yeah. As far as the the summit, yeah. the summit, we have reports of some new cracks opening up. Um, not very wide yet, but definitely moving. You know, cracked and moving. Right. Um, all over the golf course. So we know that all the cracks around at least that side of the caldera are are moving. Even if they're not moving very much, they open up a tiny bit. People can notice it, right? right. All the gravel and the little dust is falling in there, so you can actually see the crack really nice. But it's not moving nearly as much as the ones within the caldera itself, right? So that's that's still where most of the motion is taking place. And you know, we still worry about the the museum. Where there was a report of the on a road to Kilauea Overlook, yeah, which is adjacent to the museum. Which is adjacent to the museum, near. exactly. Yeah, um, that there, there there's a new crack that's farther over from the main caldera wall, right? So similar to the golf course being a farther over crack. Right. So those cracks are all moving and opening also. So it's definitely moving more than I thought it would. You know, uh, it's yeah. expanding a much larger area, right? And interesting that there's not a whole lot of explosions happening. It's just, you know, we're calling them explosion collapses, right? But there's not a whole lot of ash being sent up. In fact, the USGS lowered their aviation alert level from red to orange. Aviation, you know, being planes flying over. They're worried, you know, planes worry about ash getting in the engines, right? So that's not a concern here anymore, they're saying, at least not until something changes because it hasn't put out ash in a long, you know, at least not very high in a long time. So that seems to be a pattern we've fallen into. You know, so it's interesting because when there's no ash, geologically, that means there's not a whole lot of geologic record left of that thing happening, right? right? So when you have a collapse like this happening, that's kind of surprising, I think by surprise, we didn't see this happening. There is no geologic deposit that corresponds to an event like this right. that you can pick out very easily. Oh, this was a collapse area, this little tiny bit of ash that fell. Maybe that's why we're so surprised. We can right. see something like this happening because geology relies on something being left behind right. to find afterwards. And if there's no ash coming out, there's not a whole lot left behind, except the cracks and everything falling in, and all that's going to get covered by lava at some point. Right. Yeah. We couldn't find the evidence of this kind of process before. It doesn't mean it never happened before. Yeah, it certainly right. happened before, right? Yeah. But we're going to see now that it's not leaving much evidence behind. I mean, it seems crazy to say now that the crater is gigantic, but yeah. in a hundred years, when that whole thing is filled with lava and you can't even see the rubble underneath it anymore, they won't know how that's it happened. Kind of the, exactly. And that's kind of maybe when we actually arrived here with the science to try to figure out what's going on. It might have been a little bit in between periods, so we don't have the information to reconstruct this kind of event. Right. So that's why I mean, it maybe is so surprising to us. It's pretty amazing. One thing about it, though, that might be reassuring to people, a lot of people are concerned about the summit escalating now that the collapsing is just so much bigger than anybody expected. Is it all of a sudden going to make a blast that destroys golf course and, and these things? And one thing about it is, you know, there's less gas and very little emissions of ash coming out of it. And so um, there's the magma that is causing these steam explosions is still retreating away down in there and very little of the fresh magma material that's causing the explosions is coming to the surface. And so large scale pyroclastic explosions that people talk about and Kilauea has done in the past um, are not likely at this time because the magma is barely involved. It's down there somewhere but what we're seeing is rock dust and steam is all that ever comes out. So um, hopefully as, as crazy as it's getting with the, the crater becoming so large, um, it's still not indicating that a giant explosion is going to suddenly surprise us because that would take more lava, more magma to do it, right? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and since the issue just said exactly that by, by dropping the alert code right, from Red right. Orange, exactly said, we don't believe any pyroclastic explosions. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
So yeah, that's not, positive. At least not with the signal as we're receiving right now. Right? If the signals change, we start seeing a bunch of different kinds of earthquakes and different kind of where it can't release and the pattern of these five and a half so every 20, 24 hours. Which, by the way, we're expecting one any minute. Any unless, minute. unless it's happened already while we're doing this, we missed it. Um, but at any minute, that should, that should be coming because we're about, that's about the pattern to spend. It's been, I think, for 24 hours already, now, maybe 25, 26 even. So it could have happened for all, all we know. Um, but that pattern, as long as that pattern holds, it's all good, right? If something changes with the pattern, then we'll start reassessing whether we need to re increase reactivate, you know, increase that alert level again, depending on if we see earthquakes and pressure building or steam showing that water is coming into the system and building pressure or lack of any kind of steam showing that none of the steam can get out of there. Like anything, something would have to change is what I'm saying, right? right? So right now it seems it's been the same as far as the signs, stuff right. collapsing, some steam's coming out. When a collapse, collapse uh, earthquakes are happening, they're, they're saying that there's more SO2 coming out, so the gas is kind of working its way out to the cracks. I'm thinking of it, it's almost more like an implosion, you know, because it's like blasts underground, like energy releases underground, so that all the rocks that are loose above it are shaking enough so that the cracks between them and the gas can come out. Yeah. But there's not, it's not really shooting stuff in the air apart right. from the gas, you know, it's more gas and steam is coming out. It's events. hard to explain because it's such an amazingly huge amount of earthquake equivalent to a five point something earthquake, but then nothing's coming out, you know, it's hard to right. describe what's actually going on down there, but. Yeah. Um, not to diminish, you know, as the crater gets larger and larger, it's certainly causing problems for everyone up there. Oh, yeah. um, and the, the future is uncertain for everybody in and around uh, Volcano and the golf course, anybody who works in Volcanoes National Park. Um, as long as all this cracking and collapsing continues, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's ruining lives almost to the level that, that people's lives have been affected down here near the fissures, you know. Um, and if it continues, you know, that, that impact on people's lives, how the, the tourism, their work, you know, is going to continue whether or not it makes a big explosion. So yeah, yeah, we're, right. we're not at like a great volcanic risk for something catastrophic other than we can count on this continuing for a little while and it and it is having a negative effect on a lot of people's lives so yeah well, you're right it's, it's going to disrupt people's lives in volcano right more than it has already probably right. right even if lava never comes anywhere near their house right? right because what's happening now is there's cracks in a golf course road right we talked about there's, mm -hmm. there's even cracks on when you when you turn into the golf course the road that first road when it turns and goes up that little hill a little cliff that you see that's one of those caldera faults also right so if all caldera faults are moving that one could also move and if that road gets cracked right there and let's say it moves yeah. a foot then suddenly you can't drive in another golf course anymore right right so that's you know they've solved this kind of issue with steel plates before right but disruption seems like it's likely to continue for those people unfortunately in the golf course area and no one knows how long this is gonna go or what extent it will finish at, you know? I, that's just the thing. G USGS is not trying to comment on how far this will continue collapsing because we just don't know that kind of thing. Know, yeah. <laughs> so it's a tough thing. Um, I don't know what you had to talk about next, but that can kind of lead into, um, I wanted to give my endorsement for everything USGS does, like give us these amazing maps to use for the community's benefit here at the Pu'u Honua. As I think a lot of people having the paper map um, on the table here to discuss helps with people's learning styles and stuff. And what I wanted to say, as everyone's scrambling for more information, um, you notice that Philip and I are always referring to USGS data because they're the ones getting all this data. They're the ones that are enabling us to have these conversations with all the research and the work they do. And so it's it's not about um, getting ahead and finding out behind the scenes what, what USGS isn't telling us, they're telling us everything they can. And when they produce these maps and things, a lot of preliminary research goes through. So uh, I've been talking with um, Dane DuPont from Hawaii Tracker and everybody wishes they could get more of the internal data from USGS to contribute to informing the community and I just wanted to point out the USGS is a team of expert experts and when their research is coming in they have to decide what data is actually trustworthy before it even goes on these maps before it even comes out to us and so I just want to point out Philip and I are always 
using the data that USGS has already approved. You know, we're not trying to create our own research of these events. We're just uh, interpreting them for you guys. And I think that's important for understanding what we're actually doing here with these maps. So much mahalo, much aloha, USGS. Thank you. We need this stuff. All so, right. Yeah. So yeah. this time? There's like a quality control aspect of what you're saying, basically, right? Quality control. So not, not everything, that even that we've heard, has turned yeah. out to be true. Right. You know, we've been saying we say something, we're going to confirm it, and then we don't, it's not being confirmed. So that's what they're going through also. They're just not doing it in the public eye. Right. Right. All right. With that said, now we turn right there to the queen. Hi. Sorry guys, I was a little delayed in starting because I was eating. <laughs> oh, mahalo nui, by the way, to everyone Sam at Choi. World Central Kitchen. Um, Sam Choi was the celebrity chef who popped in today to volunteer, but the reality is that there are dozens of people who have committed their time, their aloha, to pour into preparing meals for a thousand meals a day, three hot meals a day that of course come here to Pu'uhonua Opuna, also get delivered to uh, the tent city that has um, popped up outside of the American Red Cross shelter in Pahoa. They don't serve inside the shelter. That's because uh, World Central Kinsha actually asked American Red Cross and the Salvation Army, if they needed help feeding those people who were staying inside the shelter, they were told they did not need help. So they are instead assisting those people who are living in their tents and in their cars in that perimeter area of the Pahoa American Red Cross shelter. They're also feeding the summer um, fun kids um, at Pahoa Elementary. And it's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous program that um, we are going to go into greater detail about in our Hawaii News Now coverage tomorrow night. So be sure Right. Yeah, because we um, had the opportunity to also interview um, the Lukin family, and they are fabulous. And as you guys know, they have been here for this community um, from the very beginning. They've been here for more than three decades. But for those who have been through sort of the Puna developments of the last several years, as many of us have, um, starting with Hurricane Isel in most recent memory, and then of course the 2014 Pahoa lava threat. You will remember that um, Lukin's was one of the restaurants right there on Pahoa Main Street that was committed to staying open and feeding people no matter what, so that families who were going through all of the stress and all of the frustration and all of the concern of what was happening here in Pahoa would be able to have a hot meal, to have something consistent, including just being able to take their kids out to have, you know, tortilla chips and salsa, and um, hopefully mom and dad got to have some of those amazing margaritas as well. So as you know, they have been a amazing backbone of this community, and so now we're going to share the latest on what they're up to and what's happening with them and how it ties into World Central Kitchen, and of course a big mahalo to Sam Choi, um, who fed all of us tonight. Um, his spin on shoyu chicken was delicious. Bomb. The bomb. Um, and also salad was super ono. In fact, um, you know that it was a good meal because there's absolutely nothing out on the table except for like two plates that are covered in aluminum foil. And I think that they have people's names on it. Possibly Ikaika Marzo's. Nah. I might have eaten that one though. You never know. You can eat mine on if you like. Thanks, brother. <laughs> so what did you see at the meeting tonight? Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things that I see today, um, that I, I just got confirmed um, that tomorrow, Harvey 130 uh, blockade here that is going down to Leilani mm -hmm. and Lower Puna. Mm -hmm. They will be up, upgrading their security tomorrow. So nobody can go down except we have factors. So Upgrading their security, interesting. So okay. I just got a got a call from a friend, a couple friends. Okay. And they said that, um, you know, last week, there was kind of, you know, there, there wasn't police that was over here, they didn't. I mean, it was a good time for people to go down to Kalamana okay. and have their good, good night at the, uh, um, Wednesday night market and apparently civilian fans don't want that to happen again so they're gonna they, they, they upgrading the security so the only way you can get down is a placard. I see that is an interesting and it's a blue placard. Okay okay so. and that's going to be for anyone passing through this checkpoint? Yeah. Okay well here's what I do know. According to Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency, there are 657 houses that have been claimed by lava. That's a number that went up since Sunday. And they also tell us, they admit that those numbers are likely lower than the actuality of the experience of the Puna residents here. What we also know is that that figure only counts permitted 
county homes and no unpermitted structures of which we know there were quite a few in the Pune neighborhoods that have been impacted since this eruptive event began nearly eight weeks ago. It'll be exactly two months on Thursday. May 3rd was when that first fissure opened up in Leilani Estates on Mulhala Street. And for those of you who live here, certainly those of you who are in Puna and across Hawaii Island and really across the state, you know how much has happened over the last two months. What Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency officials cannot tell us, um, despite our repeated requests, is how many of those houses of that figure, 657, are primary residences versus how many are second or vacation homes. As you guys know, that is a critical figure that needs to get taken into account as it applies to FEMA assistance. Um, and also what happens in terms of how they move forward with any kinds of transitional or permanent housing because it indicates uh, how many of the available pool of homes that once existed here in Pune were taken up by either families, again, who had no other place to live versus families who perhaps, again, um, based on the description, either had another home or were staying in a vacation home or a place that was used as either a short-term or long-term rental. We know that the housing crisis here in Hawaii is very real. It is certainly very real right now in Pune, and it is something that there are a lot of brilliant, big-hearted, incredible minds that are working together right now to address and to come up with solutions. We have seen that in action as Pu'uhonua Opuna has been this incredible example of what community can do um, when perhaps maybe government cannot or government is unable to or is you know still trying to work out all of the details of red tape. We have seen that now with um, the micro houses that have gone up um, due in part of course uh, with the amazing leadership of Gilbert Alginaldo who provided us with the lot in which Pu'uhonua Opuna now stands as a result of his hard work and really sort of his just entrepreneurial spirit but also just his incredibly again big heart and just um, he embodies the Aloha spirit in a way that um, anyone who has ever met him will totally know um, but also just how he was thinking outside of the box let's not let things slow us down let's figure out how to come up with solutions we saw that now taking place there's going to be a um, groundbreaking ceremony I understand on Saturday electricity should be coming shortly people will be moving into those homes and then I understand we will see that replicated in different communities different pockets of areas really across the Pune district where land has been made available and so we're really really excited to continue sharing those incredible stories of how resilient and strong and wonderful and just awesome this community is um, but that's why those numbers are important that's why we're gonna continue to press for those answers in the meantime I'm not sure how much um, Philip um, and Ranger John um, touched on uh, while I was gone but um, I did get a chance to speak with USGS Deputy Scientist in Charge, Steve Brentley, for a little while before the meeting today. We had a one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna be posting that on IGTV here in just a few. He is such a fabulous guy. Um, as you guys were talking about, and I just caught the tail end of it, USGS, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, and every single one of the geologists, scientists, the people who just keep the lights on um, in that former building, and certainly now where they've had to move in Hilo, are incredibly hardworking people who have helped um, tirelessly to keep this community informed and um, many of them again um, working hours that don't even belong in the day or on a clock to make sure that people feel safe that people feel supported that was certainly always my experience with anyone from USGS um, Janet Babb of course the spokesperson who I've dealt with the most um, but certainly also Steve Brantley who today told us that there is just absolutely no indication whatsoever that this eruptive event is coming to an end anytime soon and he said that that is indicative because the amount of volume of lava that is right now being produced by Fisher 8 and also the Fisher complex which is sort of what they're referring to this kind of area up here in Leilani Estates that's fueling the lava flow that's now making its way down to Kapoho there's just no sign that it's stopping that these collapse events that are happening at Hale Mauma'u crater which are indicative of the fact that magma is still withdrawing from the summit area that it is feeding this flow here along the lower east rift zone is still happening and it's happening almost like clockwork now they have figured out this just very systematic pattern um, that every 20 to 24 hours there is a collapse or eruptive event at the summit um, and they know that it's coming because right when they get to that about like 
5.3 magnitude level of a release of energy, it is immediately followed by one of these collapse events. And as a result, the significant change that is taking place at Hale Mauma'u Crater was described to us today as astounding and historic in that um, the crater has doubled in size from rim to rim. It has dropped at least 800 feet, but it is continuing to slump inward. It is continuing to fall. That is dramatically changing the landscape, as you can imagine. Um, it's unrecognizable. They released the coolest drone footage. If you haven't seen it yet, I have it up on my Facebook page, um, and it's pretty much been shared amazing. publicly. It's amazing. Um, they're also one of the few people who have drone permission, so anytime drone footage is out, it's pretty cool. And um, it shows you really that there's just no way of knowing. I'm being made fun of, I think, for how quickly I'm talking and how much ground I'm covering. Is that what's no, happening? No, you're on the phone over there. Oh, okay. Um, oh, they're watching our life. Um, anyway, I will wrap this up because I could go for on for too long. But the point <laughs> is that USGS says that there's a lot happening at the summit. And all of that activity at the summit indicates that there is no potential end in sight to what is happening along the lower east rift zone, that the volume of lava that has been produced is now quickly approaching and surpassing the most lava they have seen in recent history. So over the last several hundred years. And that is significant, of course, because when everyone wants to know, wants to ask, wants them to look into their crystal ball to determine when this will come to an end, they just don't have a way of telling us. What they can tell us is that it has already covered nearly 10 square miles. It has created an additional 409 acres of land in the form of a lava delta that is now protruding out and filling what was once Kapoho Bay, encroaching into water that was 200 feet deep at one point with no signs again of stopping, that that lava flow front at the coast is now about two miles wide. It was starting to push southerly um, toward Ahalanui, which was the concern that it was potentially heading toward warm ponds. And if it continued to move at its current speed, it could actually impact that area within a week. But then what they saw during their overflight observation this morning was that it was starting again to push more toward the north over the old flow path on the water. And so that's why they just tell us there's no way with any kind of certainty that they can predict lava direction, lava the path, lava speed, lava impact. And that's why they're working around the clock to keep monitoring the situation because every day it does change. And even if it's a little change, all of those little changes add up. And that's all I got. Uh, that was real fast. Yeah, was awesome. What is it saying? Oh, yeah, I'm going to head to bed actually. So on that note, <laughs> take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Malama Fono, Aloha, Ahui Ho. And yours one. Uh, one moment at a time. We're back to that. We're ready for goodbyes. <laughs> Yours? Uh, no, it's just power, I would say. Oh, 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 oh. I, yeah. like I like it. I like that one. <laughs> and we all say, stay classy, Puna. Aloha.